the bike that really encourages you to hustle and drive it just because you've got that inherent kind of stiffness and poise built into the bike just feels like it's really keen to attack the trail and take sharper more aggressive lines my name's guy kestivan i've been a professional biking kit reviewer for 25 years and today i'm at the wheelbase big demo day in hamsley forest for a super quick first ride on trex alloy all-rounder the evergreen fuel ex8 so i'm just going to do a quick static check on the bike before we uh, hit the trails properly here at hamsley and as you can see alloy frame it's the uh, top alloy bike in the range above uh, above this you go to the 9.8 which comes with a carbon frame uh, but the catch here i mean trek say themselves in the literature is you get really really good kit uh, so if you're prioritizing uh, sort of value in terms of componentry over weight then uh, this is the place to go so xt rear mech slx front uh, four pot shimano brakes von Traeger's own line 30 comp wheels uh, with really big volume 2.5 inch rear xr5 von Traeger team issue tire on the back and a 2.6 on the front and that's sitting in this uh, fox 34 rhythm fork 140 mil travel at the front 130 mil at the back and that's via a custom tuned fox float evo so the larger volume uh what they call reactive tune it's actually been fox have been, trek have been running this for a long long time initially developed with penske the uh, motorsport specialists over in america it's basically a uh, digressive tune within the shock that gives it a really really kind of crisp pedaling platform which i've already really felt coming up the hill but still loads of supple travel below that uh, it's a standard shock mount it's not trunnion uh, but the shock's the conventional way up and then you've got rebound and a basic compression switch on there as well a uh, bit more trek sort of acronym pleasure you've got uh, abp at the back which is the active braking pivot it means that that rear axle is the concentric part of the pivot keeps the back end nice and lively and neutral as you can see you've got plenty of space down there and there's also what they call the mino link I don't know if you can just see it in there that's basically a little eccentric flip chip uh, on between the seat stay and the rocker link there uh, that changes the angles by about half a degree which means it goes from 66 to 66.5 degrees at the head and 75 or 75.5 degrees at the rear and it also makes a tiny difference in the chain stay length so 436 or 437 on this large and it slightly changes the reach as well so you've got 475 or 476 but uh, in terms of other features, I mean, if you've watched the uh, Trek Top Fuel review I did recently, then interesting to see the Fuel EX, even though it's the longer travel trail bike, doesn't get internal storage yet. Uh, it's still a uh, standard down tube on there, although you do get particularly nice foil graphics. And uh, that's a nice little detail there. It's actually a uh, zip tie holder to stop the cables thrashing about. They have got a really clever name for it, which I'll put in the uh, captions, but I can't remember it now. But, you know, right through, the cable management's really, really neatly done. And if you just look on the back there, behind that SLX change there, you've got ISCG tabs as well. So, proper trail bike in terms of uh, fixtures and features. Plus, because you haven't got that internal storage, then the bottle cage sits lower down on the down tube, so you can get a full-size bottle in there for those longer, thirsty rides. Oh, and coming up the front, you've got a little fork knocker there. You've also got what Trek called the knock block, which is basically a steering limiter built into the head tube. You can remove that if you want full lock, but it gives you about 78 degrees, gives you about 72 degrees of movement anyway, before there's any risk of your controls coming around and tapping the top tube. So uh, that's the, uh, oh, I'll obviously mention, comes with a nice, reasonably short stem, standard, full width bars, lock on grips, so, and a uh, dropper post. 150 mil stroke on this bike 170 mil stroke on this bike and then depending on the sizes you go for you got a small or extra small it comes with 27.5 wheels with a large and then i think it's small medium or medium and large I'll, again i'll correct this in the captions uh, it comes with 29 wheels and then large extra large and then in the medium sizes you've got uh, the option of 27.5 or 29 wheels and also a big trek bonus is the fact it comes in a medium large size uh, which is 
a real, real sweet spot for loads of riders. And I mean, it's, you know, it's an extra, significant extra cost for Trek to make those, but it means that you get a really, really good fit on the bike. And it goes up to uh, extra, extra large and uh, extra large too. So uh, that's the uh, quick spec check done on it. But what really matters is how it rides. So let's make use of these trails at Amstelie on the wheelbase big demo day and uh, clip in and crack on. So first thing to say is I mentioned the weight in the static talk through and while Trek lists this bike as 13.9 kilos for a medium complete bike which did cause me some consternation if you've watched me uh, top fuel video which is kind of the lighter race bike or shorter travel race bike I should say then you'll have spotted that I've called that bike out for actually being heavier because I weighed it at 14 point I mean that's an interesting feature 14.4 kilos so I've now had to go back and redo that video because actually the real weight of this bike well in the large without pedals so it'll add a bit of weight but certainly not a kilo which is the actual reality this clock's in at 14.9 so the good news is there's definitely a point in getting the top fuel the 120 mil bike because it is around half a kilo lighter bad news is is this fuel the X8 is heavier and that does make it a reasonably heavy for a mid-travel bike but the crappier thing is that it doesn't seem to bother it at all certainly not in terms of pedaling efficiency because this reactive rear end keeps it really crisp and prompt on the pedals I already felt that coming up and also it keeps it really really poised when you're changing speeds or just trying to get a feel for what the bike's doing at a lower velocity and while it's pretty heavy for its travel with this alloy frame I have to say the pedaling is just super efficient feels really prompt and fast rolling even on these 2.6s at 18 psi as soon as you get on feels like it wants to spin up and get some height in the bag and on the flat really shifts along so you've got that reactive tune on the Fox rear shock just keeping it sitting nice and high in the travel it's just naturally efficient I guess that's even with it set up so it actually bottoms out relatively easy it certainly uses its stroke easily so full marks for pedaling on this fuel the x and the nice thing is when the revs drop and it gets a bit loose or blocky it's still nice and sensitive so plenty of traction especially when you combine it with those bigger volume tires all right mate <laughs> and even just cruising along slightly rough fire road like this it's got a really easy roll it's got quite a predatory it's a surprisingly predatory feel to it especially for its number on the scales this does feel like it's well up for going out for a big day chasing down summits chasing down other people ahead you know it's not one of these mid-travel bikes it's basically just a sawn off downhill bike still feels like a proper trail bike that won't mind some distance and obviously things like the mixed xt slx spec and it's got a really fast pickup 54 tooth all right, all right. rear hub instant engagement they call it that just gives it again just really helps with that prompt feel but because 
that ABP pivot keeps things nice and active through the back. There's not a ton of anti-squat. It doesn't mean it's jerking your back through the pedals when you're powering on through lumps. So again, just, although it's definitely its main characteristic is that it's really, really crisp and precise in feel. Still got plenty of traction and fluidity underneath you. I have to say, really engaging the bike straight away. You know, kind of concentrated on the weight because obviously that's a big deal compared to the top fuel. But in a weird way, I'd almost say this, this is what I'd pick for longer cross country rides because somehow it, I mean, it might just be a Fox suspension thing. But well, this actually feels like the more distance minded bike. And one thing that has come to light, just pedaling on the road here, well, again, you know, feels super fast, rolling and efficient, considering what chunky tyres these look like. And, you know, they are a really good all-round trail tyre. I don't know if you can pick it up, but there's some definite creaking coming from down near the cranks. And it might not be that press fit bottom bracket, but there is a fair chance it is. And, of course, that's one area where on the top fuel, they have switch back to the more reliable, easy to service threaded bottom bracket standard. So while I was going on about how much the XT SLX kit is a bonus from durability, maybe that press fit bottom bracket evens things out. All right, all right. And again, that pickup on that freel really helps, keeps it prompt out of turns. It's a bike that really encourages you to hustle and drive it. 66 degree head angle in the slack position, but just even, you know, even the brake feel feels really sharp just because you've got that inherent kind of stiffness and poise built into the bike. Just feels like it's really keen to attack the trail and take sharper, more aggressive lines. I wouldn't necessarily say it's forgiving, but which is weird because that's exactly what I would say about the top fuel. This is really fascinating actually, having ridden that bike a lot recently, how different they feel for essentially very similar platforms. This is, yeah, it's great, you know, because it reason, there's a real reason for both bikes to exist, which I wasn't sure there was. But yeah, proper crisp charger is this EX8. And again, going back to the top fuel comparison, I think a lot of that comes from the fact that A, the larger carcass tires, like it doesn't make sense in some ways, tend to feel stiffer on the same rim, even though I'm only running these at 18 psi. Because you've got more airspace, there's a weird pneumatic rule that means they actually don't conform as easily. They feel stiffer. But also, you've got a more supple fork, I think, in the SID, and you've definitely got a higher spec rear shock on the top fuel as well because you've got that rock shock deluxe ultimate but certainly a really interesting comparison between the two bikes and pleased to see that you know this ex definitely has a place as a that's slightly simpler in the frame you still got all the knock block and you know all the classic suspension features there but you haven't got that internal storage and, but then again, that gives you an advantage in terms of the frames are actually the same weight on these bikes. Well, again, if we're to believe Trek's weights, but that would kind of make sense because the fork's heavier, the tires are heavier. So that would account for that 500 gram weight increase. But anyway, look, I'll do a Trek uh, Fuel EX versus top fuel static head to head anyway in a second. So I'll link that at the end, but the basic thing you need to know about this EX8 is it's just 
really, it just seems really, really well sorted. Very tight, very prompt, and efficient feeling bike that manages to really hide its frame weight and pays you back in some decent componentry for the money that will really play out long terms in terms of too many terms there reliability and durability especially on this XT highlight version plus I think it looks really good which is uh, always very important and I mean having worked in bike shops can't underestimate how important it is the fact that they give you a proper range of fits as well so I'll swing around this way cheers so not only have you got those extra smalls and smalls with a proportional wheel size you've also got that medium large in the middle and when you think about how many questions I get on videos saying oh I'm in between medium and large which should I get <laughs> the answer maybe is just go get a trek and plus this aloe bike is pretty heavy if you go for the uh, carbon ones you're saving over a kilo in frame weight which obviously gets you thanks very much uh, <laughs> a snappier more responsive bike overall <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the way this behaves around tight turns or anything like that generally feels properly gripped all right and this track themselves describe it it's just really good doing a whole load of different things and and obviously it's only a quick snapshot ride but I've been doing this for a long old time so it's my job to make an accurate I wonder where this goes first impression and I mean the fact that it's the kind of bike that you want to just go check out little sections like that yeah, it's still clearly playful and engaging and fun as much as it is impressively efficient as well yeah I mean basically it's just a really really well sorted all round trail bike which is always want trek I wanted it to be alright and where there's a huge market 